Hello everyone, um, my name is Olivia Brown and I am currently a third year undergraduate student at UCLA studying anthropology. And if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering what evolutionary medicine is. Um, and I am so happy to tell you all about it and what exactly that means. Evolutionary medicine is actually my minor, so I am very actively involved, I guess, in the like anthro content and then also the evolutionary medicine content. Is academic content a thing? I don't know, I, I kind of hope it is. <laughs> but I would consider myself very central to these two fields as a student and so I'm so excited to digress slightly from the anthropology topic that I usually talk about here on this channel and dip your toes, my toes, into the field that is evolutionary medicine. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So this minor is first and foremost a biology minor. Any of my viewers coming into this topic probably have some anthropological preconceptions about what it is. Evolutionary medicine can be used to back up biological anthropology arguments, but on its own, I would not say that it's like an anthropology minor. But now let's dive into the first portion of this video, which is what is evolutionary medicine? So evolutionary medicine, okay, hear me out, two parts, evolution, Okay, and medicine, that's the second part, I know. So who would have known? I am gonna dive into evolution just a teeny bit. If you're not into evolution or you already know what this is, you can skip um, forward. But to anyone who is not familiar with evolution, there are three ingredients that you need, okay, for evolution to happen. There's variation, inheritance, and differential reproductive success. What is that? Inheritance basically means that traits can get passed down from parent to offspring. Then variation, in order for evolution to occur, you need variation in a population. And then this brings me to the third ingredient, which is differential reproductive success. And this basically means that some people are more likely to survive to then reproduce. So what is the outcome of these ingredients of evolution and natural selection? Also, I kind of am using evolution and natural selection interchangeably. Natural selection is just the process of evolution. If anyone was wondering, that's the relationship between those two. So if you have evolution, natural selection happening, if you think about it, ideally, if if this process is weeding out, is getting rid of individuals who aren't as likely to survive, technically we should have people perfectly suited to their environment and every single person should be living very long, very wonderful, very blissful lives. But that's not what we experience in our reality. You have horrible things that happen like obesity and cancer and just disease and if if natural selection was at play wouldn't wouldn't you think that these things would have been eliminated in a population one example of this is some illnesses let's take breast cancer which is uh, extremely common especially in north america women die during their reproductive years often and it makes you wonder how something can be so widespread if the women who um experience uh, breast cancer actually have less children. Now, I'm not saying that that's what the data shows, but I'm saying how can something be so widespread when it can actually inhibit your ability to have more children? And this is one of the main questions that evolutionary medicine really gets at. And this framework brings me into the second part of evolutionary medicine, which is medicine. The biggest takeaway that I've had from this minor so far is the fact that natural selection optimizes reproduction, not health. I want you to think about that. And I'm gonna give you an example to let that like really sink in because I'm not kidding, when I heard that for the first time, my mind was kind of blown. If you think about what that means, let's take two individuals, okay? This first individual, 50 years old and has six kids um, and dies at 50, okay? Second individual lives to 80 years old, only has two kids, all right? And let's say for sake of example, ha the amount of kids that you have is a trait. It's a gene, okay? It's just, it's what happens. It's not, it's not, but for sake of example. And what that means in the context of this example is that the individual who lived to 50 and had six kids, their six kids are gonna have six more kids. And then they're gonna have six kids and it's just this exponential growth of children, okay? And they're all living to age 50. And then you have the second individual who lives to 80 and has two kids, and their two kids have two kids and their two kids have two kids, and I think you understand what I'm saying. So even though this person lived a longer life and full of longevity, whatever, okay, 
that gene, those amount, that number of kids is not gonna spread as rapidly in the population as this younger individual who had way more kids. Because in the eyes of evolution, fitness doesn't actually mean how big your muscles are. Fitness means how many children you're having or the number of offspring. So in the eyes of Darwin, okay, if I had two kids and you had 10 kids, you are more fit than me. Fit in popular culture tends to mean better or superior or more muscles is a good thing. And that's not what it means in biology. It's not saying that one person is better than the other. I touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, so when people, when biologists say that this person is more fit, all they're saying is this person has more children. I have my laptop here and there's two important notes, especially from one class that I've taken that I wanna say. And these are direct quotes. I'm citing Anthro 129 Evolutionary Medicine. One of them is, it is not an alternative to modern medicine. So people aren't saying that evolutionary medicine is better than what you go to the doctor and learn about. That's not what I'm saying at all, okay? And then the second thing is that evolutionary medicine is not advocating for human species to be improved. Again, like I said earlier, people have this like misconception about evolution and it's like saying that each generation is better than the next and superior. That's literally not what it's saying at all. It's just looking at which genes have been passed down, okay? So if I have the blue eye gene, okay, and that gets passed down to my offspring successfully, it just means that my offspring has blue eyes, okay? And there's a lot of other things about evolutionary medicine that I think can be misunderstood. Um, maybe I'll leave those in the comment section down below just because I don't want to bore anyone and I tend to get really passionate about stuff like this. Literally not what it's saying at all because there's so many things about evolutionary biology and biological anthropology that can be misconstrued and it's really important to me that that doesn't happen. Now I just want to briefly touch on the classes that you have to take. So this is I guess the part two of the video and like I said at the very beginning, uh, evolutionary medicine is a primarily biological minor. So you have to take, at least at my school, the there's a seven series which is like the biology prerequisite series. Um, and you have to take the 7A and 7B class. There is a 7C class, but you don't have to take it. So it's just two quarters of biology. And then you take EEB 100, which is just, I think it's just ecology and evolutionary biology. I don't actually know if there's like a topic name. And then you have to take uh, evolutionary medicine, which is like another operative. And then there's five classes that you just take for fun. Um, upper divisions that you can choose from all different categories and it's great and this bio minor overlaps with some of the biological anthropology upper divisions which is which is why it was so practical for me to do this minor in addition to the fact that i'm literally obsessed with it so lastly i just want to say that i love this minor and if you have any questions for me um feel free to leave them down below again i was my heart was so warmed by everyone who wanted to learn about my minor um again because this channel is so devoted to anthropology it's just really great to see some of my uh my bio nerds out there so yeah it's also midterms week right now or midterms week so they kind of never end at the quarter system so i apologize if this video got out a little bit late normally i upload on sundays but i don't know if that's gonna happen hopefully it does okay my camera is gonna die um i love you all thank you so much for watching you know what to do and i'll see you next sunday okay bye mm -hmm.